what's going on everybody welcome back so today we're going to be talking about how I keep the parameters stable in my 75 gallon reef tank I like to keep things pretty simple as simple as I can get them so what I want to do is I want to show you guys exactly how I dose my tank and what I dose the tank with so let me take this gel filter off put that to the side all right now again this is part of your fish tank husbandry your aquarium husbandry reef tank husbandry whatever you want to call it this is part of my daily routine. Now I'm fortunate enough to be in front of my tank multiple times throughout the day, in the morning before work, when I come home, before bed. I'm pretty much home all the time, except for vacations. And when I do go away on vacation, I do have somebody that has a reef tank that comes over daily and does the little chores that I need them to do. So I'm very fortunate with that. So I don't have a doser. I prefer to hand dose. Many people think I'm crazy for doing that, and I usually test daily, maybe every other day, and again, I've been told I'm crazy for doing that as well, but, you know, I don't have any malfunctions, I don't have any pieces of equipment going crazy and dumping a bunch of chemicals in my tank. Um, the only way that the alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium gets dosed is with my hands, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to accidentally pour a gallon of alkalinity or mag or calcium in my tank so I just been doing it this way for about two years now and it's been a hundred percent solid there's been days where I have missed dosing but those days are long gone that was years ago actually so what I want to do is I want to show you exactly my setup exactly how I do things so if we come right over here this is my little section this is my little cabinet area I got this section here and this section here. This is all my fish tank stuff. So, you guys know I like to use the Salifert kits. I usually test my alkalinity daily, okay? Once in a while, I'll skip a day, but I know what I dosed the day before and what the tank usually consumes, so it's easy for me to just do that. Now, you guys can see here, I do have a little handwritten chart. This is my little calculator of, you know, what the parameters are and what I need to dose. So. You guys could see at one time I was running 8.0 DKH. Now I bumped it up to 8.5. So when I test my tank, it'll tell me how much I need to dose. Now, I'll show you guys in a second downstairs what it, exactly it is that I'm dosing. But if we look up here, this is my little section. This is my alkalinity. This is my liquid alkalinity. And I have my syringes here. This is a 10 mil syringe. And I have a little measuring cup here. I forget what this goes up to, 100 milliliters. And that's how I dose. If the tank is calling for a specific amount, say 40 mLs, what I like to do is I'll fill this cup with 40 mLs and use the syringe and draw in, say, 10 mLs. And then what I'll do is I'll just walk over to the tank and I'll hold the syringe right pretty much inside my return pump nozzle and just let it blow across. Now, if it's calling for 40 mils that day, I'll probably do half before I leave for work and half when I come back, and that's it. That's all I dose daily. Once a week, I will test my calcium and magnesium, and if I have to add things at that point, I can. Now, originally when I was starting out in the hobby and I started to do the dosing, I was told that you have to dose equal parts daily, you know, 40 mLs of calcium, 40 mLs of alkalinity, and then at the end of the week, test your mag and dose accordingly. But I've been just dosing alkalinity daily, and my calcium doesn't really drop that much by the end of the week. So that's why I will test at the end of the week and just do that. And, you know, I could dose both, but since I'm not using a doser, um, it's not as accurate the times that I come up to the tank. It's within an hour of each other. It's usually between 7 and 9 in the morning and usually between 4 and 6 in the afternoon when I dose my tank. It's always usually the same, unless I have to work a little late or leave work a little early. But now I want to show you guys what it is that I'm actually dosing the tank with. Alright, so this is what I'm dosing the tank with at the moment. I've been using the BRS uh, pharmaceutical grade while I was using the old stuff before it got discontinued. But I was using the two-part you know where you mix it yourself I would always buy it pre-portioned mix it in the one gallon jugs very simple if you're thinking about getting into dosing your tank for the first time 
This is a great way to start off because if you go to Bulk Reef Supply, they do have a nice, easy calculator and it makes things a lot easier to start off. I don't really think that like the store-bought stuff that's, you know, the liquid two-part on the bottle in the shell on the shelf for months. I don't really think that's great stuff. I really think that if you're going to start out dosing, you should at least start out with um, the BRS stuff if you can get it. If not, you know, try and find something similar where you do mix it up yourself. Now, when I say mix it up yourself, that is another huge thing. Um, even though you take the measuring cups and you do the exact math... Even if you weigh it and you add whatever the con whatever it is, it's like uh, two and a half cups of the you know the the soda ash, and then the rest is RODI. Now, even though you measure it perfectly, it may be off a little bit. So if you go by their calculator and you go by how many gallons you have in your tank, when you make a new batch, it might change on you. In the past, when I've done the exact same thing. I have 85 total gallons in my system. So if it was, if I wanted to go from 8 to 8.5, it may say, okay, add 40 mils. But the next batch that I made might have been a little bit of a hot mix, meaning that the, the mixture was stronger. So instead of dosing 40 mils, I would, you know, dose the tank, test it like two, three hours later, and I noticed, oh, it went a little bit above 8.5. So then I'd have to make my own calculator, and that's what I have upstairs. Per gallon, I make a brand new calculator. It's a little bit of a tricky pain, but that's part of the husbandry. If reef tanks were easy, everybody would do it. So again, if you are going to be dosing anything, dose your tank, write it down how much you dose, write down what your tank was at and what it is at afterwards, do the math, and make yourself a little chart. Now, once I'm done, actually, once I'm done with the alkalinity, which you can see I'm getting pretty low at. Once this is over and done with, I'm getting rid of the um, alkalinity and the calcium for now. That's getting chucked, going bye-bye. I'm going to be going over to the ESV Bionic. I, um, I will have to make my own calculator for this as well. What I did at first is I just bought the pre-mixed stuff, and this should last me quite a while. I'm thinking each bottle will probably last me, I don't know, two or three months. Now, when I do switch over, I am going to be testing uh, more frequently because when I dose the BRS2 part, I'm allowed to dose alkalinity daily and calcium once a week. But that might be a little bit different with the ESV. I have to, you know, when you switch over things, you definitely want to keep track, write things down, and test. So, once I start dosing the Bionic, I'm going to make my own calculator for the alkalinity. And then, actually, I'll probably wait maybe two days, test the calcium, see what the numbers are, see if it's dropped. Because, you know, if you add alkalinity to your tank, it's going to drop your calcium. They, the, they come together. Now, when you dose your calcium, your alkalinity will drop. It's a little bit tricky if, if you haven't dosed before. That, um, you know, you might want to do your research on what happens when you dose only alkalinity and not calcium. You know, like I said, you are supposed to, and I'm going to say supposed to, dose equal parts per day. Well, every tank is different. Every house is different. Um, and every tank maintenance is different. So, you know, the consumption of the alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium in your tank may be completely different from everybody else's. So... I'm just going to recommend you do it your way, whatever works best for you. If you want to start off dosing equal two parts, that's fine. If you have a really low alkalinity and your calcium is really high and you want to slowly bring your alk up, you can only dose alkalinity until your alkalinity comes up to a certain point and your calcium's at a certain point. Then you can dose equal two parts. That's what I've done in the past and it's worked. But the way my tank consumes, I only have to do alkalinity daily and calcium once a week. Mag is usually every three to four weeks I test it. I don't really test it because um, I do my little frequent water changes. But, you know, going to be starting a new product. I'm actually getting ready to dose. I have to dose my weekly portion of calcium, which is, it was calling for 350 mLs. I'm going from 420 to 460, but I put 400 mLs in it. Sounds like a nice even number. And I'm going to go put that in the tank right now. So, if I moved a little bit too fast for you, I don't know, maybe I was rambling on a little bit, maybe just watch the video again. 
and it might just help you. Um, I wish this type of video was made when I started to dose because this is a good method for me and it just works well for my tank and it would have made things a lot easier. But after two, almost two years of dosing, I finally uh, got the hang of it. But now I'm going to be switching to a new two-part, so I'll probably have to start that all over again. We will see. It's going to be easy. I'm going to dose the alkalinity daily and then make my chart and then check my calcium every other day. And probably by the end of the week, maybe by the end of two weeks, I should have a full chart on how I have to do things. So I'm going to go dose my calcium and go feed the fish. And I will see you guys on the next one. Oh, and if you stayed this long, we're almost at 11 minutes. I'm going to show you guys a little project that I'm working on. Yep, this is my new sump. This is what's going to be going upstairs. Baffles are in, they're done. But I'm doing something a little different. I'm painting the back and the sides black. I was going to paint the bottom, but I don't have enough time. I actually have to swap this out quickly because somebody else is coming to pick up the sump that I'm using upstairs. Look at this paint. Look at that. It's like a mirror finish. I literally just tape it off, tape off the edges, and pour it on. It's awesome. And I guess I'll show you guys. This is the paint that I'm using. If you're going to paint your glass, I highly recommend that right there. Take a screenshot. That's the best paint for glass. And you want to clean your glass first with rubbing alcohol and then paint it. And it will come out pretty nice. If we look down low, there's no, there's, you, it's like a mirror. Look at that. Not bad. All right. I'm rambling. This is a little sneak peek for the next video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Talk to you later. All right, I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates. And in case you haven't seen these two videos, you might want to click on one and check it out. Again, thanks for stopping by.